I once heard someone say that the most popular time for pastors to get out of town was this weekend of when the feast of the Holy Trinity was with you know not sure what the, not sure what to preach on and the difficulty of the mystery of the Trinity and them kind of trying to avoid it so they get out of town on this weekend and coincidentally this is the sixth year now including my deacon year where I've had the opportunity or at least the possibility to preach on this weekend and all the previous five years the pastor you know didn't schedule me for this weekend so this is the first weekend I'm preaching which I thought well maybe it wasn't a coincidence maybe the pastor in my previous parishes just didn't trust me to preach on this weekend but here we are today and what is highlighted is the fact that God is triune Christianity is the only religion that says that God is three three persons Father Son Holy Spirit and one being we announce it every time we gather here on Sunday at the, the Nicene Creed, say that the Son, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, is begotten, not made. Sometimes we think that Jesus, when he was born, that he, when he was born, that that's when he, that's when he came on the scene, and that's when he was created. But Jesus has begotten from all eternity, not made, consubstantial with the father that is to say he is of one substance one essence with the father and that way from all eternity our first reading from proverbs chapter 8 makes that puts that emphasis on the fact that 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 was god from the beginning as proverbs 8 talks about you know it's kind of a an insight to the genesis account of creation chapters 1 and 2 saying that you know sometimes we think of god creating that he was alone but God even when he created he wasn't alone because God was never alone Proverbs says it's revealing that as God is creating the world there's another person there right alongside him loving playing the word said did you did you hear that first reading when the Lord established the heavens I was there I was beside him I was his delight day by day playing before him all the while when the Lord when God was creating there was this playing going on playing on the surface of the earth this is where C.S. Lewis I think gets the image of the Trinity as being a divine dance this playing or, or a huddle they're just in this huddle where they're just engulfed with one another from all eternity pouring out to one another this divine huddle okay sounds nice right so let's make this extremely practical. And you're like, well, how can this, like, how can you make the doctrine of the Trinity practical for my life? What difference, would it make, what difference does it make? To that, I'd say this. The, the doctrine of the Trinity makes the most important, practical, concrete difference in your life than you could ever imagine. Because of the, 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 there's no other doctrine that tells you more about God than the doctrine of the Trinity. There's no other doctrine that tells you about yourself than the doctrine of the Trinity. If you know that God is three, you know what your life is all about. And in a world that is all the more and increasingly confused, we need to know this doctrine of the Trinity. And there are many implications here. I just want to give two. One implication of the Trinity a practical, concrete, most important implication of the Trinity is the fact that if the world is made by a triune God, then relationships and love is what life is all about. Imagine for a minute if God was not three. If from all of eternity, from, or from all eternity, God was not three, but he's just one. If God is just one, it means that from the beginning, the beginning of time, from all eternity, there was no love. At the beginning, there's no love because love is something one person has for another person. It re love requires another. There's no love with just one. So if God is one, it means love and relationship is not the essence of God. See, but God's not one, he's three. And so love and re in, in relationship from all eternity 
is the Father, the Son, the Spirit pouring themselves out for another, honoring one another, loving one another, adoring, even as Proverbs 8 says, this play that's taking place, this divine huddle, this dance. And so bring it even more practical. Because we're made in God's image and likeness and because he's three, relationships are more important than success. You know, that's really, that's important for us to hear in, in the suburbs, in Clarendon Hills, but not just the suburbs, just the, the culture that we live in rubs up against that. And none of us, not a person here is immune to that because we all live in the culture and we all breathe in what the culture is saying. And the culture says, relationships are nice, but we gotta get our work done. Relationships are nice, so long as it doesn't get away from my self-autonomy. Relationships are nice, so long as it doesn't get in the way of me making more money or gaining a, more power or a greater spot of influence or prestige. Sheryl Sandberg uh, was, this, was the CEO for a number of years for Facebook, COO, Chief, exec, Chief Operating Officer, she's self-made billionaire, her husband suddenly, when they were both in their 40s, her, her husband suddenly died. And upon her husband's death, she wrote a, a memoir. And in, in that memoir, she, says, she said, if I knew how short life was, I would have spent more time with my husband and less time making money. You know, it, it's a cl cliche phrase of nobody that we hear, no, you know, nobody on their deathbed is on their deathbed saying, I wish I spent more time in the office. But it's, ex it's dead right. Within, within the last 40 hours, I've spent time at four different deathbeds in the last 40 hours. And each time it's the same thing. It's the same image whether I walk into the home or I walk into the hospital room. It's the same thing, what I see, it's, it's a huddle. It, 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 there's, the families are engulfed over their loved one as, as they're dying that especially rang true a number, um, a, a while ago when I celebrated a funeral of a dad and four kids and he coached his four kids. He loved to coach them. The kids loved to be coached by their dad, whether it was basketball or baseball. And in that, as I walked into the home and I turned in knowing that he was a coach and he spent a lot of time in the huddles, I turned in, I saw all four of his kids there, some on the floor, some right by his head, holding, it, holding his hands, rubbing his feet, rubbing his head, just there, in this huddle, just engulfed. If anything goes above relationships, above family, above church community, we end in frustration. We're frustrated. We are frustrated. Because we go up, we go up against the very ultimate reality of existence because God is three, God is triune. So, so, so we're wired for it. And so we put anything above relationships of love, we go up against the very exact existence of reality because we have a triune God and he's three. Second implication of the Trinity. The Trinity reveals our need to belong. The desire and the need to belong is universal to every human heart. I've been a pastor here now 11 months and I'm getting to that spot, not there with, I wouldn't, wouldn't even say a good chunk of your names, but I, I, I'm there 11 months in now where I know at least where people sit. It's like that lady always sits three rows from the back on that side. This family is always right there in the third pew in, in even coming up, coming in this mass, at each mass, I always notice at least one, one family that I'm throwing off. I'm looking at my watch and I'm like, well, they're at the 1130. Normally they're at the 930. Is this the, is this the, is this the 1130? So little maybe side note to that is know that because I'm at every single mass, every single weekend, I do notice. Okay. I do notice when you are here and when you're not here. Just keep that in your back pocket. Okay. 
what I did a couple weeks ago was with, with a woman. I said, hey, just, I, I noticed that you haven't been here the last few weeks. You know, it, is everything okay? And she was, she was surprised. She says, wow, I can't, believe you, I can't believe you noticed I haven't been here. Because nobody wants to be just a number. We, we, we have this deep longing that's in every single human heart, this desire to belong, to be known. And that's always been the case, but it's, in, but it's increasingly the case. And I shared with you even, uh, uh, you know, going, graduating from a junior high, from a small farm junior high and going into a big high school, that first week was hell. Because I, 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 I'm looking like, and I'm uncertain, where do I belong? Who do I fit in with? Who am I gonna ha have communion with? And it's always been the case because that's the desire of every human heart. But increasingly, increasingly the problem is we belong, the need and the desire to belong is, be, is becoming, it, 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 it's becoming less met as we're less connected. And what that does is that creates a vacuum. And so then what we find ourselves today is because we belong less today, we find ourselves today where it's like, I will say I'm anything. I will say that, I, I will say, I'm anything in order just to belong. I want to belong to some, some, someone, so I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm anything. Because the desire of the human heart is so great to belong. Why? Because God is three. Because we're wired to belong. Because we have from, from the all eternity, God is three. We have a triune God. We can only be known in the context of community. And so if we are, like, if we are in a spot even where it's like, well, I kind of hope that, I, I like the idea of just being a number when I come to church, or just my head down, you know, put my blinders up, and I don't, you know, no, I, I, I don't care if anyone says hi to me. Or, it means you're going up against the very grain of ultimate reality. Because we have a triune God. God is three. So maybe I want to end here just with, with a with, with a plea, a plea, and it's this, get in, get into the huddle, get into the huddle of love. We saw in Proverbs, our first reading, Proverbs eight talks about that huddle where from the beginning of the time, the father, son, Holy spirit is just, they're just in this spot of play, this dance, if you will, or this huddle. We need that. We long for that. We're wired for that. We, we're wired to participate and enter into that divine huddle, that spot, and to play there. Every human heart was made for that. Unless you get into that huddle, you will not experience abundant life. You cannot experience abundant life unless you get into that huddle, that divine triune love. So how do you get in? How do you get in? Our gospel, verse 15, that Deacon, Deacon Tim proclaims, Jesus talking to his disciples says this, everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and I will declare it unto you. I will share it to you or I will impart it upon you, other translations say. How do we get into the huddle? God sent his son Jesus to go on the cross to, to, to lead the huddle, to bring us in. He longs to, for us to, to be part of that play, the part of that huddle, to go to the cross for us. Jesus was sent, the spirit is calling us in to participate and to play into that huddle. Are you, am I participating in that huddle today with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Some of you say, well, I don't know if I've ever really had that play. I don't know if I'm in it now. I don't know if I've ever been in that huddle. I don't know if I've ever experienced that abundant life that comes within the triune God. If that's us, surrender your life to him today. Give him everything. Don't hold anything back. Whatever it's gonna cost you, give him your entire life and surrender it to him. Give him your life, put him first, put relationships first. And maybe it's during this moment of silence right now, after this homily, maybe it's when you come up and receive the Eucharist or the silence afterwards, make a prayer and say, Lord, I want in. I want to get into the huddle. I want to be engulfed in that huddle. I want to play.